Good day to our family. I'm your host, Dish Belay Bichin. Firstly, I'd like to thank you for joining me once again on another motivating episode of Talk the Talk. Now, let me introduce you to our guest for today's episode, an exceptional female dealer principal making her mark in the motoring industry. Actually, I think she's made her mark in the motoring industry. She's been in this industry forever um, with her strong leadership and industry expertise. She is transforming the automotive landscape. Um, she sets high standards for customer satisfaction and business excellence, inspiring her team to go above and beyond. Um, her strategic mindset and commitment to innovation is reshaping the role of dealer principal. Um, her impact in the motoring industry definitely is undeniable, which makes her a true trailblazer in her field. Now, the lady that I'm going to introduce you to is not just a female um, in a DP or leadership role. Um, she is an exceptional champion for every single um, initiative and platform we launched from the outset of Talk the Talk Studios, Women in Motoring South Africa, Women Talk. She's been part um, and parcel of this initiative from day one. So without further ado, let's welcome Debbie Smith, the dealer principal at Motus Nissan East Rand Mall. And as always, this interview is proudly brought to you by Seriti Solutions, MFC and Evo by NetBank. Hello, Miss Debbie Smith. Hi, Desh. It's so nice to see you again. And while that inter um, introduction was amazing, so I've obviously got a huge, huge shoes to fill <laughs> of my own. But yeah, let's see what we can do. <laughs> yes. You know, I think the reason I have people like you, Levon Davis, Jeff Osborne, um, and many of uh, the, the leaders or people in leadership roles that mm. revisit us every year. It's so, and, and I said this last, year, last week as well to Levon in my interview. It's simply because when you first came here three years ago, we had 6,000 followers. And last year we had 20,000 followers and now we're on 62,000 followers. So, <laughs> we, so is that due to me and Levon? <laughs> yes, and it's, it's you and Levon, yes. <laughs> But it's because we want to reintroduce you to our platform and to the many women that are joining mm -hmm. our platform. And I think there's many females that are just starting out in the industry. And I'm thankful um, that we have been instrumental uh, mm -hmm. and big influences in lots of women wanting to join the trade. And it's only women like you that can. I'm not a dealer principal. I'm just a motoring journalist. But it's your positions that they aspire to want to be in. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for coming back and you know, for continuously supporting this initiative. We appreciate you. Thanks, Desh. It's only a pleasure. Okay, so Debs, let's get straight into it. I also want to mention, Debbie has been a winner for the Motoring Woman of the Year Awards in the past. Uh, this year, again, she has been nominated and she has moved to the semi-finalists and hopefully she will be in the finals. <laughs> but um, this platform, as she knows and recognizes, is for upliftment and empowerment in Absolutely. educating. And she knows it's not a competition. But um, again, it's woman like this that uses this platform to empower so we're going to start off by trying getting new or more votes for Debs so and we're going to ask Debbie to tell us a little bit about herself and a very very long history in motoring yeah. so go for it okay <laughs> um nice to be here Desh as I said um yeah it's been an amazing um uh, an amazing life in the motor industry to be honest with you it is my life I started when I was 18, um, 18 years old, and, and I haven't given up yet, and I'm not going to tell you my age now. So you're not going to tell us <laughs> how long you've been in the industry because we're going to guess your age? Um, yeah, I started off in, in the sales environment where, um, where I was taught by, uh, then it was, it was, I mean, throughout my, my motor industry, I've had men supporting me, pushing me, making sure that I'm okay. And, and growing me in the, in the industry. So I started in the sales, I then went into fleet sales, um, grew a little bit of confidence on that side and went into to, to, to the fleet sales. Um, from there became sales manager, 
and, and then into, into the dealer principal position. Obviously, with the opportunities of not being here in Joburg, so I originally am from Joburg, I moved from Joburg, I worked in Fruinachen for a little bit, and then was moved to Mpangeni, mm -hmm. um, where I was DP at, at Motus Nissan there. And um, from Mpangeni, moved to the Durban dealership, Durban South, um, as dealer principal there, and then I took a great opportunity to come back. Because of me, to my, back to, Joe back. <laughs> to my starting <laughs> in the industry. Amazing, because my, my dream was always to be a dealer principal at Motus Nissan East Rand Mall. It was then Intercity, changed to Imperial, and now Motus. And um, where I started selling cars is now where I'm a dealer principal. Oh, wow, what a full circle yeah, moment. so it's wonderful. And what an example of dreams can be achieved. Absolutely. You just need to stay consistent in what you do and, and continue to believe in your dreams. So Debs, um, I usually ask this question to our newcomers to our platform and you know we've grown from, you've been there from day one. I remember meeting you at a workshop four years ago in Durban. In Durban. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean we have grown exponentially yeah. um, in the past four years. So the question I normally ask our new ladies is how do you feel about this platform? But I know how you feel about this platform, you've been a part of it. So I'm going to ask you, how do you feel? about the growth of this platform and the support that we receive on a national level um, in terms of women empowerment. Okay, so <clears throat> I think it's been an incredible initiative. Mm -hmm. I think it's run by Desh and I mean I'm not blowing smoke but I mean it's you that has made this where it, where it is today. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I think um, you know, as I said before, men have always grown me in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, with this new initiative coming through, you know, you get your Tiger Wheels, you get your uh, Midas Parts, you get whatever in the industry, all part of the motor industry. And if I can say, I think this initiative has become part of the motor industry. Mm -hmm. And I think without, without this initiative being where it is now, women wouldn't know that there's opportunity of growth. Mm -hmm. Women wouldn't know that they can do it. Mm -hmm. Women wouldn't understand. Um, yo, but yo, there's, there's a franchise director, she's a woman, if she can do it, why can't I? Absolutely. Um, so absolutely, I think this has been an incredible time of, the, of, of, of our, our lives now, in the last four years, for five years. For, um, for women to become empowered into the industry. It's an extremely challenging industry at the moment, and I know that um, we, we always pull through, mm -hmm. but um, it's great to know that women are getting not noticed, um, even from, even a cleaner, yes, yes. all the way up yep. to franchise directors. Mm -hmm. so, so there's no such thing as, oh, she's, she's a DP, you know, she's better than me. Mm -hmm. Nobody's better than anybody. Mm -hmm. It's what you listen to, it's what you learn, and it's who you are and who you become in the industry and where you're going to grow to. Absolutely. So, Debs, um, what encourages you to stay in the industry? I don't know how to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, <clears throat> It's an, like I said, it's, it's excitement. Mm -hmm. I think living your day to day, you, you sit in the evening, you plan your next day, you know exactly what you're going to do, you get to work, and what you've planned is not even started mm -hmm. till four o'clock in the afternoon. So it's the excitement of challenges, it's different. It's not sitting, um, writing papers, doing the same thing all the time. It's meeting people, it's meeting your um, colleagues, mm -hmm. um, getting to know each other, getting to know each other in a team like we have, like you have here, mm -hmm. where we can learn from each other. Absolutely. Where I'm sitting as a DP, I still learn from my cleaners. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. And um, it's because you listen. Mm -hmm. You listen to what people are saying all the time. And I just, I love people. 
Oh, that I love, love people. And people love you. <laughs> people love you. I There's very few uh, dealer principals in the industry that I've met. There's plenty that I haven't met. But the ones in my network, in my circle, they are so loved by mm. their staff and colleagues. And gosh, Debs, you don't even know how many people in this industry knows you. Oh, sure. <laughs> and wants you. to work for you, by Oh, the way. is it? Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that speaks volumes about yeah. who you are. And no, you've been absolutely. absolutely consistent in who you are. You are so yeah. that that's so amazing. Now, Devs, what's your management style like? Okay, I believe that um, I cannot make it. Mm -hmm. I cannot grow. I cannot get anywhere without my managers and without their staff. Mm -hmm. So I believe it comes from the bottom. Um, respect yeah. each other and um, speak to people the way that you would like to be spoken to. Mm -hmm. um, don't shoot from the hip, count to 10 before you want to say something because you might say the wrong things. Absolutely. Um, and just, just motivate, keep mm -hmm. on saying, you know, we, like we all make mistakes, we're all human. Mm -hmm. And I always say to my people, please, if you make mistakes, it's not a problem. Come to me, let's sort it out. It doesn't go away. Yeah. It doesn't go away, it just gets bigger and bigger. So the sooner you sort it out, the quicker it gets resolved and you carry on. And I think I've learned that from, from my franchise directors before, from Nizam, who's an extremely um, also people's person. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we, we listen, we learn from each other. And um, yeah, that's how I treat my staff. And I, mm -hmm. I have an open door policy. I'm forever on the showroom floor, in the workshops, on the wash bay. Um, and if there's work to be done, I do it. Absolutely. I pull in. I'm not better than anybody else. So I'll move cars. I'll clean cars. I'll change tires. I'll check in the workshop what they're doing. I wouldn't. I wouldn't change an engine. <laughs> Let's hope not. Believe me. <laughs> but um, but you know, just show interest in what they're doing mm -hmm. and motivate. Look, Debs. I mean, you know, I've been there at one point where I think something was happening in your dealership and you needed to evacuate, and Debbie literally got all of her staff out of that dealership and she was standing alone with just one other person yeah. and that's the type of person that yeah. you are taking care of everybody mm -hmm. else's needs before your own yeah. and that's that's so admirable yeah. well done debbie thanks um debs you've represented other brands in the past it's been many years in the industry but now you're with nissan and very proud because you brought one here for me to test drive for the next week that's so right. <laughs> it's a new nissan extra i'm that's excited right. to has there been much changes? Lots of changes. Okay, I'm you've driven the the old one, the, which is like a few <laughs> you're now ago. going to experience new technology. Mm -hmm. um, it's a magnificent vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love Nissan. Um, it's I'm passionate about everything about my product, about my job, about everything. Mm -hmm. So without that passion, I mean, you, you you're not going to have it go anywhere, or whatever. But at the end of the day, this x is an exceptional vehicle. What do you love most about representing the brand Nissan? Um, I'll be honest with you, I think it's because I've been there since 1995. Okay. <laughs> so, um, oh, oh, what age? Um, <laughs> so that's almost 30 years. That's almost yeah, 30 yeah. years. So, it's born in me. Mm -hmm. I think everything that Nissan do, the people at, at, at the OEM, at Nissan South Africa, mm -hmm. They know me. Mm -hmm. They've worked closely yes. with me. Yes. Um, so there's always a, a good, in, a good um, social side. Right. Um, when we have the Nissan Awards, when we go, everybody knows everybody. Mm -hmm. And from from the Nissan side, I think it's a family. Yes. Um, more so than than just working our, our, our cell Nissans. And I, I, I hear a lot about that Japanese culture that, you know, that penetrates the brand and its people and the representation. Mm. So, I mean, even from, I won't mention other Japanese brands yeah. here, but I mean, it, it's don't. really, they, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but there are lots of uh, talk about their culture. Very much so. Right. They're very, um, they're very passionate people mm -hmm. and they bring it out in the product, they bring it out in the people. Um, you know, we had Anderson Awards the other day and they were there mm -hmm. um, to support South Africa, to support actually Africa, mm -hmm. um, Nissan as a whole. And it just, it, it, it shows you that they, they're just as passionate about what they do as what we do. Absolutely. And, and, and it, brings, it brings a bit of 
um, like motivation into our into into the South African market mm -hmm. to know that you oh, he was there, you know, right. uh, dancing, <laughs> I'm putting out, dancing with us, and oh. you know, it it was a wonderful experience. Certainly. Now, Dev's. It's so important. We were talking about this off air earlier on what we're doing in our lives and how, you know, there's still struggles in the motoring trade and you know, in, the, in the industry. I think not just our trade, but, you know, um, mm. globally there's struggle. But how important do you believe a mental or a healthy mental state of mind in the workplace is? So, um, you know, I think, I think South Africa at the moment, um, under the economical situation that when everybody's a little bit um, scared of of what's going to happen, where we are, um, I think, like you say, not only in the motor industry, in any industry, but but talking about me and in my dealership and in the motor industry, um, we have challenges. Mm -hmm. We have challenges. Um, they used to be called a seven-year dip in the industry and we knew that there was it was coming yeah. but none of us planned for it I mean mm -hmm. we knew it was gonna come we were at the end of it um, I hope no 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 no, no. we're now <laughs> carrying on for way too long um, yeah. in an unknown situation but you know what at the end of the day um, this is what we do mm -hmm. you wake up in the morning um, to to come to work mm -hmm. you've got to enjoy it you've got to be you've got to be positive about what's going to happen during the day about um, customers looking after your customers doing something different um, especially when it comes to service mm -hmm. um, with 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 your customers so that they know they can pass on so that the, their families purchase from you, their families support you. Um, you've got to make a name out there and you've got to make your name good. Mm -hmm. So you've got to always be on your toes. You've got to always be, have a smile on your face. And you know, I always say to my staff as well, please, when you answer the telephone, please put a smile on your face. Yes. And they all look at me as if I'm mad. And I say, do you know that somebody can see through a telephone? Yep. And if you put a smile on your face, it immediately makes a complete different situation. Absolutely. Um, even if you're having the worst day, if you've, if you've had a bad family morning, mm -hmm. um, your kids don't want to get dressed fast enough and you're anxious to get to work and you're late, whatever. You know what? You come to, come to work to enjoy yourself. Yeah. We've, we've, for a long time, um, I, was, I can't remember who I was chatting to, but for a long time we've missed out on the fun yeah. in the yeah. industry. Um, and we need to bring that back. Absolutely, certainly, Debs. I mean, I think COVID also was is a big reason yeah. for that. So we definitely want to live our best lives. Mm. Where and and I think eighty percent of our lives are spent at work. Yeah. So it's so important to have a healthy state of mind. Um, Debs, look. You've been in the industry only for two years now. Okay. Um, so you've been there for the transformation of females coming to. Yes. Um, what's been your experiences through the year? Are you seeing the transformation? Are you seeing women becoming more uh, present and you know being more recognized and moving up the ranks into leadership positions? And, and how's that feeling for you? Okay, so absolutely, Dej. I mean, I've seen a very, very big change. Mm -hmm. I think in the mindsets of <clears throat> of the the bigger groups, mm -hmm. <clears throat> if I can say in the McCarthy's, I mean, uh, um, CFO, it's Motus, there's been a very big change in, yeah. in bringing women back, mm -hmm. bringing women into the industry. Right. Um, also, from, an, from a personal experience, um, I, I like to grow people, mm -hmm. okay? When I see somebody has something in them that I can help them grow. I like to grow people. And um, one, of, one of my ladies has never ever wanted to go further than where she is. And the other day I called her in and I said to her, listen, can I not put you through some study, through some, some, somewhere where we can grow you? Mm -hmm. She actually said yes. Wow. And you know, I think it's from, from, from being, um, we, always like shoved in a corner and that's what you do and that's what you have to do and mm -hmm. and the women leave um they've become more open yes. they've become more um um positive about themselves about where they stand um when they can talk when they can't talk mm -hmm. um and also 
um, given the opportunity to give ideas. Mm -hmm. So so previously it used to be a case of we would stand, sit back because it's an, uh, my question is stupid and everybody's going to laugh at me. Mm -hmm. Now we ask the questions yeah. because we want to know the answers. Yes, absolutely. Because we want to in ourselves want to grow. So, so that side of thing has definitely, definitely been a big, big change in the last, I would say, two, two years in the industry. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> two years, yeah. Two years. It is two years. Huh? <laughs> in the last two years, because I've only been years. for two and a half years in the industry. <laughs> Look, Debbie, I always end off these interviews with asking the ladies that are sitting in the seat to advise young females, uh, you know, or is there any advice? Or words of advice that you'd want to give to young females that will join the trade. We have service managers, parts managers, workshop managers, uh, sales managers, dealer principals sitting in the seat and their words can impact someone mm -hmm. um, that want to join the trade. However, I'm going to flip this question, okay, and I'm going to ask you, because you've been such a firm and constant support in my life, constantly advising me um, through my journey, I'm going to ask you, do you have any advice for me in the motoring trade? Sure, Dish. To move forward, it's only I've only been here for five years. It's <laughs> long enough, Dish. As opposed to two years, two and a half years. Um, but what advice can you give to me that I, and I'm sure a lot of other females uh, can take from what you're going to tell me because trust me, I have um, grown, I won't say the word, but I, I think my resilience and my strength, my courage comes from women like you, uh, the likes of Levon and many other women that have been mentoring me. What would you like to say to me? Dish, you know what? Um, sure. I've never really been stuck without words in my life before. I'm a very big talker. <laughs> yeah, she is. But, um, Desh, being a woman that's now gone, come into the motor industry, um, I think you understand and you motivate a lot of women that want to be involved in the motor industry. You grow people by allowing them to sit in the seat, mm -hmm. by, by introducing them to the seat, to, to, to grow them, to give them the opportunity in the, in the motor industry. Um, I believe, and I don't know if it's anything that you can learn by, but um, I believe that you need to listen. Mm -hmm. um, you need to listen to what people have to say. Listen when, they, when they're down. Listen when they're motivated. Um, and perhaps ask questions. Mm -hmm. When they're down, what's, what's, what, what's put you in that position? When you're highly strung and motivated and, and winning awards and, and doing, ask the question, how did you get there? Mm -hmm. um, and, and it'll give a little bit of an opportunity for, pe for, for other ladies in the industry to actually know, okay, if Desh said that one day, because a lot of people listen to you. <laughs> a lot of people listen to you and a lot of people want to grow from you mm -hmm. because you have the expertise, you have the resilience, you have the motivation. Um, and this is what this platform is about. Mm -hmm. It's to grow women. Aww. It really is. And, it's, and, 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 and empower them and make them feel they are worth something. Aww, so I always you. believe listening, uh, you probably do, but please just pretend that you don't and just say yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, Thank you, Debbie, for teaching me something. <laughs> well, James, you know what? When I started, well, I actually started in the industry 15 years ago, but with this platform five years ago. And no, I did not listen uh, until many women and many people like yourself in leadership positions said to me, Desh, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. And so I've taken that in and it has empowered me to become a better person and I can always learn and I'm still learning. So I thank you for that piece of advice. I'm going to try harder. And yes, I do listen, but not as much as I should. So thank you so much, Debs. I appreciate you so much for everything that you do for us. You've, you are constantly a, um, you are actually a mother, a big sister, mother <laughs> figure in all of our lives, not just me. Um, I thank you for your constant support. Thank you, Desh, and thank you very much. You're welcome, and You're congratulations again on your nomination. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> thank okay. you so much, Thanks, Debbie. Desh. Okay.
wow um, ladies in light of this conversation and I mean for me again it's always a full circle moment when my supporters from way back when are still sitting with me and still you know embracing what it is that I am doing and supporting it so uh, it really is an emotional and um, you know heartfelt interview that I'm having with Debbie and I just want to uh, talk about I just want to quote something that reminds me of Debbie actually um, I want to read a quote to you by Catherine Whitehorn and she says that find out what you like doing best just like she does um, and get someone to pay you for it so that's a real I mean a quote that reminds me of Debbie and um, Something else uh, that you know signifies her resilience is if it scares you, it might be a good thing for you to try. So ladies, you are so strong, you are stronger than you realize. Embrace challenges, trust your instincts, and never doubt your potential. Every single step um, in progress and failure is merely uh, a stepping stone to success. Surround yourself with positivity and believe in your dreams you have the resilience um, and the determination to achieve greatness trust yourself and let your potential unfold the world awaits your remarkable impact so go out there and leave your mark um, I just want to read a quote for you from my guru his name is Satguru um, your potential is not something to be measured or compared it is an in, in, sorry it is an inexhaustible wellspring of possibilities waiting to be explored embrace it trust it and let it guide you towards the extraordinary life that is rightfully yours and with that being said i would like to remind you that the question isn't who's going to let me it should always be who's going to stop me Who's going to stop me?